Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the forum for Democratic candidates for governor or who are exploring possible candidates, candidates for governor. Um, on behalf of the East Hartford Democratic Town Committee, Craig Stevenson here to my right. The Manchester Democratic Town Committee, my name is Mike Cole, uh, and I'm chair of the Manchester Democratic Town Committee. Tony Duarte, who is standing up, he is the chair of the South Windsor Democratic Town Committee. And our host this evening, Charlie Murray, did so much to put this together. And again, before we begin, I would like to thank Charlie Murray and the Glastonbury Town Committee for all the hard work putting tonight's forum together. We are, we are pleased to welcome 11 of the candidates who are either exploring or who have announced their intention to seek the Democratic nomination for governor of the great state of Connecticut. Tonight we'll start by giving each candidate in alphabetical order by last name three minutes to introduce themselves. For questions tonight, we will give candidates three minutes to respond to a question of their choice followed by three minutes to respond to a second question of their choice. The questions tonight were submitted by Democratic Town Committee members from our towns, from all four towns. Tonight is a forum on issues affecting our state. There are several people in this room who will serve as delegates to the state convention May 18th and 19th at the Hartford Convention Center. You will help us this evening make our decision in terms of which candidate or candidates we would like to support in that convention. To begin, we will hear from Dita Bargava. executive team for putting this wonderful event on. Thank you everyone for being here. These are one of those moments where I wonder if I should take my husband's last name, Pelletier, and then I wouldn't be the first one, but it all sets the trend here. Um, so I am Dita Bargava, and I'm exploring a run for governor because, like everyone here, I believe in the state of Connecticut and its future. But I think also, like a lot of people here, I do believe that it's time for change and fresh ideas. The status quo has not been working. I am a different type of Democrat because of my life story, my work experience, and my pro-business progressive platforms. I'm true and true progressive first. My passion for equal pay, pay family leave, uh, raising the minimum wage is really the reason why I ever was inspired to have a voice in policy. I'm a working mom. My mother was also a working mom. She was also a single immigrant parent who really struggled to provide my sisters and I with basic necessities. My mom is a strong person, um, and there are three things that she taught us every day of our lives, which was to educate ourselves, because only an education, a good education, would bring us economic liberty. To always strive to reach our full potential, because with a good education, there was really nothing we could not accomplish. And to never forget where we came from in our communities. So I carry my mom's words really throughout my life, now myself being attracted to things where people said I didn't belong, like playing the drums in high school, um, going on to studying electrical and computer engineering, um, and then from there, I actually started as a bank teller at the age of 15, worked my way up in the financial sector, and ended up in a successful career there for 20 years. And it was really only the last few years of my career, especially after I had my own children, where it took me back to that place where I really internalized my mom's struggles. And I realized that there were so many people that were caught in that place um, and struggling the way that my mother and our family did so many years ago. So I became much more involved civically, started a nonprofit that helps advocate family friendly policy um, and also cultural diversity, and, and uh, sat on boards of nonprofits that help underserved communities. And it was really last year when I was asked to run for uh, state rep in a town that I've not elected a Democrat in over 100 years, but I didn't think the seat should go unchallenged, um, that I realized to the extent that our economic and fiscal situation was really weighing on our state. And um, I spoke to a lot of families, a lot of 
businesses, small and large, and a few themes kept coming up. One is the pipeline of talent, because the biggest exodus out of Connecticut is age 25 to 35. So the first thing that I want to do is to introduce a public-private partnership where if a college graduate commits to work and stay in Connecticut for five years, that their loan is forgiven through that partnership. This way government is invested in the industries and businesses that invest in their pipeline, and it's that ecosystem that we are creating for our businesses and families to really give Connecticut a chance and stay. The second thing is the lack of investment in infrastructure and transportation. That's, I don't want to cut you off, but we want to keep this. Okay, if I, and so the question I'll choose is what will I do to, um, right. oh, now or no. after? Next one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. You can look for Charlie over here. Um, he'll, he'll have the card put up. I'm sorry. Good evening, everybody. I'm Lisa Cronin, uh, Mayor of the City of Hartford. I'm exploring a uh, run for governor. I just say, first of all, thanks to uh, Charlie and the chairs for organizing this, and how excited I am to see this much of a turnout. Uh, I don't know if you're there on Saturday for the Women's March, uh, but that convinced me that we have energy on our side this time. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. Uh, the, three years ago, uh, when I started running for mayor, it was because I saw my city at a crossroads. A great city uh, that I think was headed in the wrong direction. And when I became mayor, I had to tackle an unprecedented fiscal crisis. And we had to do it in a different way. We had to be honest and transparent about just how big it was. We had to be bold about what we had to do. We had to make some really hard choices. We had to build partnerships. We had to work together with our labor unions, some tough but respectful negotiations to make real significant change. We had to re-engage our businesses, big and small, but especially the big ones, in being a part of the long-term strength of the city. And we had to build a bipartisan consensus about why it mattered. A lot of people didn't think we could get it done. And while we still got work to do, you know, if we started on our own two-yard yard line, we're well past mid faith field. But what I see right now in the state of Connecticut is a state that's at the same kind of crossroads. You know, a state that we all know faces a big fiscal crisis. But I think bigger than that, it has a crisis of confidence right now. But this is a great state, I and mean, it's a great state to raise your family. We've got incredible people, incredible talent, incredible companies. I'm going to talk later about economic development and what I think we need to do there. But we have so much potential for growth. And I think that what we need to do in Connecticut is, much like in Hartford, we had to tackle that fiscal crisis, but at the same time restore a sense of optimism and confidence in the city's future. We've got to do that same thing. We've got to be willing to do hard things. We've got to build new partnerships, but we have to lay out a path for growth. I think that includes strengthening our transportation investment. I think it includes uh, a lot of the economic development stuff that I'll talk later about. Charlie gave me the one minute, so I'm going to speed ahead to just tell you, you know, many of you know me as mayor, but I've been in public service for a while. Uh, I'm a Navy veteran. I served in Afghanistan, uh, Navy intel officer, and served on the anti-corruption task force over there. Uh, and I saw over there what it means when people really lose faith in the government institutions. That here is what's at risk right now because of Donald Trump. I served for four years in the Obama administration. So the Obama Treasury Department was part of the team that uh, developed and passed the Wall Street Reform and Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Uh, the bureau that Donald Trump is now trying to destroy. And then I served for two years as the chief legal counsel to the governor, uh, where I got to work on issues like passing common sense gun reforms after the tragedy in Sandy Hook, and pushing for environmental issues, uh, initiatives that matter statewide, uh, leading a charge to try to end chronic veterans homelessness in this state. And what I take from all of those experiences is that when government is used the way it should be, when it's filled not just by the, the best and the brightest, but by people who care and understand what government can do when it's used for good, we can change the world and we can change this state. And that's why I'm exploring. I hope you're your support. Thank you very much.
uh, Mayor Moran, congratulations to Manchester for being elected or voted one of the best. I don't want to get out of here. <laughs> Glastonbury have been recognized as great communities too and it is so nice to be here to uh, tell you about my exploratory campaign for a governor. We need transformational leadership in our state. Uh, we need an economy that works for everybody. Um, and we need a special person who will be our governor. And um, we've seen what happens when we look to Washington and we put a person in office who has no government experience. And so I think it's important that the person who will be our next governor have both private sector and public sector experience because uh, our governor will need to work with the legislature. Our governor will need to work with the federal delegation and constitutional officers. And I've had the uh, opportunity to do that as Secretary of the State of Connecticut, registering thousands of voters uh, registering hundreds of thousands of businesses and helping to create thousands of jobs in our state. Also, it's really, really important uh, that we have someone in the governor's chair who understands um, what we need to do to grow our economy. Um, because we can't tax our way out, cut our way out of this mess, we have to grow our way out. And so I've spent the past six years helping more than 80 homegrown companies uh, create good paying jobs in our state. Um, and we need a governor who brings that experience as well. Um, I am very passionate, not just about helping small businesses, uh, but I have one top priority that everybody in the state expects, and that's uh, to pass a budget to help grow jobs, um, and uh, I'm getting the one minute sign. So um, I thank you all for coming because we are Democrats, most of us, and for the enlightened people who join us, thanks for coming. Um, but we need to win, because 2018 is a very important election. We need to elect Democrats to take over our state Senate and to keep our majority in the state house. Redistricting is coming up in 2020. And I am unique amongst the candidates, both Democrat and Republican, and that I am the only one who has been elected statewide four times by big margins. So let's work together and let's win. Thank you so much. be here with all of you tonight. I want to thank, of course, East Hartford, my native town, uh, South Windsor, Manchester, uh, and uh, Glastonbury, of course. Thank you all for organizing this great uh, forum. Thanks to uh, Senator Cassano, who is here. I appreciate Senator Cassano's support of my campaign. And thanks to uh, all the members of, of my team who are here with me, supporting me each and every day over the last three plus months. And a very special welcome to, uh, to my great partner, a partner of energy, a partner of passion, a partner of compassion, who has chosen to spend her birthday here with me tonight, Carol Conley, my wife. So why am I running? I'm running for three simple reasons. One, I do love Connecticut, and that's why Carol and I moved back here to my home state to raise our two boys, Sean and Brendan, 11 and 8 years old. Second, opportunity. We want our two boys and all of our children and all our grandchildren to enjoy the same opportunity that the last three generations of my family enjoyed right here in Connecticut. And the third reason is, I know we can do it. I've said we're in a crisis, and I believe we are, but it's solvable. I know that working together with the right long-term plan, with collaborative, results-driven leadership, we can change the narrative here in our state. We can write the new story of Connecticut opportunity. My love runs deep in this state, and it's deeply rooted in my family's story, a story that starts with my grandparents on my mother's side coming from Ireland, getting their first jobs in 1943 as a groundskeeper at Pratt & Whitney just across the way. My grandmother later following getting a job as a factory worker at Pratt & Whitney. They saved, they bought their first house, they found their opportunity here. My father, same thing. 
52 years ago this month, my father hopped a flight from Dublin, Ireland, and he landed in Logan Airport, and within two years, he bought and operated his own small landscaping business, met and married my mom, and bought their first house. They found their opportunity. Same thing with my brother, my sisters, and I, uh, growing up in East Tarford, attending public schools, getting my first job at Beef Steak Charlie's washing dishes. <laughs> I was promoted to busboy, by the way. <laughs> But I'm running, and Carol and I are engaged in this because we want the same opportunity for everyone. We want a fair shot no matter who you are here in Connecticut. And it comes down to our state's economy, which I will talk about. You know, as I've traveled the state first as commissioner and later as a candidate, there's been a consistent theme. And that is people are frustrated, they're struggling, but they're hungry for a different style of leadership. And that's exactly what I bring to the table based on the three tiers of experience, my military experience, my corporate experience working at Pratt & Whitney, and my most recent experience running a state agency. You know, so as someone who has not run for office before, I'm not running because it's the next political title that I want or a line on my resume. I'm not running for uh, elected office for full time. And I'm not running this time to position myself for next time. I'm running to roll up my sleeves, to jump in the trenches, and to offer my leadership to elevate service over politics. Thank you very much. This is a sign of how Democrats feel. The Democrats are energizing Connecticut to realize it's a time for us to be engaged, to participate as candidates if we feel that we can offer something. Or to participate as we do tonight, not just in listening, but in this election process, which is so critical. I'm excited about this election. I'm excited, but I'm concerned and cautious as well. I've announced the governor because, like others here, certainly I care about it. I love this state. And I've been mayor of Connecticut's largest city, collectively now for some 14 years. And through that, if I've got nothing else, <coughs> along with the, the ups and the downs, the mistakes and the, and, and the high points, it's experience in trying to understand the challenges of government, of running a large city. At that time, when I first took it over, at age 31, when it was literally bankrupt, when for days they weren't even, my predecessor filed bankruptcy and they weren't even cash the city paychecks, to um, understand the dynamics of how to get people, if you're going to be successful, how to get people that are one smarter than you in the room to be part of your team. And then people also in the room to work cooperatively <laughs> for a collective goal. In that time, it, it, that place, it was to revive a, a bankrupt city and then quickly to pull it out, put it back on its feet, to stabilize its budget for the next 10 years without raising taxes, to help see crime drop to its lowest levels in decades, to spur a, a confidence and stability that produced waterfront development, uh, a ball team, a hockey team, and uh, the type of advancements in neighborhoods that um, still uh, remain today. Of course, of course you know, or if you don't, you need to know. I made some serious mistakes while I was in office. <laughs> but recently, less than two years ago, the people of the great city of Bridgeport put their trust back in me. So I asked them for a second chance. I said, understanding the sacred trust of running that city and trying to put it back on track, I asked for the opportunity to do it again and again today. Now, looking at some of the advancements and the commitments that I've held true to in these past two years, I look at the state of Connecticut and the partnership and the commitment that it's supposed to make to, to us as local elected officials, those of us that try to make a contribution to our community, and whether we're on boards of education or just, just, just citizens who want a better life, as some of the candidates talked about for, for our families and for our children, and realize that as a state, we fail. I have a skill set. Uh, I have experience that I think can help bring together what we need to put Connecticut as a state entity back on track in a way that will not only produce jobs and a, and a better vision or a better future for Connecticut, but one that will make us proud and remind us of the reasons why whether we or our forefathers came here, settled here, and look at this as a place where we want to raise families for generations. So I thank you for the opportunity in this great state and this great country just to be here, to be part of the energy of this Democratic Party and to say, now's our time. With, with me and with all of us here as potential leaders, let's move this state forward over the next few months as Democratic Party. Let's make it happen in Connecticut. Thank you so much. Commissioner Jonathan Harris. How's everyone doing tonight? This is an amazing 
feeling being here with these candidates, with all of you. I'll tell you, the four towns that are here assembled tonight show that when you have an active electorate, when you have good candidates, and you have hard work done, that we can win. Democrats can win, and that's going to happen the same in 2018. And let's face it, we have a lot of challenges. The emperor has no clothes. We have to recognize that right now. There are a lot of problems that we're facing out here. As a matter of fact, I'm here tonight with my wife Lucy and our son Spencer. Spencer graduated from UConn last year, and his opportunities are in Boston. Yeah, so you got here. Are in Boston or New York, not here. I have friends. Oh, by the way, it's great having him home, but it has its moments also. So if anyone has any, he has a resume with it. So, so if you have friends that are having a hard time finding their long-term care, they have a child with a disability. It's an adult now. They can't find independent living for that child. We have some real challenges. But we can get it done. When I was uh, a kid, and baseball season was around the corner, which it is, I would get out this book and look, and they said the outfielder had to run to where the ball was going to land. For too long, this state has stood still and hoped the ball would come to us. We need to have leadership. We need to have the energy to start running towards that ball in the future. And I can do that. I am the proven progressive problem solver here. I can hit the ground running. We have so many challenges. It is going to be extremely tough if you cannot get to the office and be able to start tackling these problems. And whether it was as mayor of West Hartford, as state senator, as deputy treasurer, as commissioner of consumer protection, I've always been able to bring people together and create practical solutions to problems. And there are three quick pathways that tonight and in the future we can delve into. First, first we need to focus on the essential services, healthcare, long-term care, education, that are true to our progressive values, that can get us not just through this fiscal crisis, but beyond. We need to make sure that we change and reinvent our economic de development style like we did in West Hartford. One that is more bottom-up and organic, and that doesn't focus on the top 1%, but that focuses on the on entrepreneurs. And finally, we need to reinvent our education so that our curriculum is keyed into the jobs of today and tomorrow, not on jobs of the past, and that we create more and more pipelines to these jobs of the future. I'm telling you, we can get this done, we can do it, it's not going to be easy, but this is a great state, and it's great to see you all here to start it off. Good evening, everybody. I gotta say, I love this crowd. I know some of you are here because you're worried, but I also hope that you're here because you believe in the state of Connecticut with the right leadership, we can turn things around. And before we get into the plan, I just wanna say one thing. This is the first time that we've all had a chance to be together as the slate of candidates. And one thing I want you to know that's unanimous, I think, for all of us, how important it is that we elect a Democrat as governor this coming year. Connecticut is different. We don't have Trump values. We have Connecticut values. And you want a governor that reflects those values. Look, Connecticut believes in our diversity. We believe in welcoming people of all different backgrounds to our state. We believe that that's what makes us stronger as a state going forward. That's the type of governor I think all of us would try and be. We believe in prosperity. We believe in getting this job engine going again. We believe in getting this state where uh, all of our kids have a great future and they can be here. My daughter's here too, Emily Lamont. Yay. See, young people are already moving back to the state. <laughs> But I'll also tell you, we want to have a fair economy. We want to have an economy that works for all of us. Nobody left behind. And I'll tell you one other thing that are Connecticut values. I come out of small business. 
We're going to make sure that our workplace, our workforce, is geared to families of the 21st century. That we have a workplace where young families, single moms, trying to balance family, home life, and work. We make sure that the workplace adjusts that. Not just pay equity, a paid family leave, but flex time and allow young couples to actually put together a system that works. And that's not bad for business, that's good for business, because people are going to know Connecticut is a place that welcomes you and young families where you can start. We're going to have a chance this evening to talk a little bit about how we're different. I think the best chance to have a Democrat elected, we have a little window in our face right now, is to elect an outsider. Elect somebody who's ready to stand up and challenge the old ways of doing business. I think you know that about Ned Lamont. I challenged uh, some years ago, and I see an awful lot of friends here. I challenged the senator of my own party. I challenged George W. Bush. I thought we were wrong. I thought we were wrong in the war in Iraq, the war over there had taken this country, and a lot of people stood up. We made a difference. We had the biggest turnout in the history of Democratic primaries in this state. And I need people to stand up again. Stand up and say that you believe in this state. Stand up and say, I'm willing to do my part to make the changes we need to get this state going again. We're going to have a chance over the next uh, hour or so to talk about some policy prescriptions. We're going to be serious. We're going to make a difference. Thank you. Guys. My name is Guy Smith. I'm a Democrat and I'm running for governor. I am not a career politician. And I am not a career candidate. I've never held elective office before. But I've spent the last 40 years as a senior officer of two global corporations, running the, one of the largest humanitarian organizations in the world, right here in Connecticut, AmeriCares. And I worked at the highest levels of the United States government for President Clinton. I also, early in my career, helped run a city larger than Hartford. And I know how to get a street paid without being shortchanged. <laughs> We're going to have a government where unions are not the enemy, teachers are not the enemy, and state workers are not the enemy. And neither is big business. I will not raise your taxes. We have enough taxes. We're just not spending them right. It is unconscionable that the governor of this state and the leadership of our legislature will not even meet with us each other on something as important as the budget. I'm going to change that. I believe in constructive engagement. I wrote a book called If It's Not Impossible, It's Not Interesting. <laughs> Let me tell you how interesting this is. <laughs> my economic plan is very simple. You can go to my website and look at all the details, but it's jobs, jobs, and jobs. Defense industry jobs, inner city jobs, union jobs. We have to make what we have work better for us. And I'm going to do that. I have a lot of ideas. We'll talk about them later. The other thing, I'm going to call on every Trump Republican office holder in the state of Connecticut to renounce the harm that they are causing to the people of our state, to the children of our state. And if they won't renounce it, they're complicit in causing that harm. They're taking away little kids' insurance. Do you know what they just passed in Congress? If a teacher buys a box of crayons, it used to be she could or he she could reduct, deduct that from their taxes. Well, they can't anymore, but Pratt & Whitney can close their factory and move to Bangladesh and deduct every dime. I'm going to put a stop to that, and I'm going to step every day preventing the harm that these clowns in Washington are trying to do to our state and our children. You can count on that. I'm going to be talking about that a lot more. Thank you very much.